All right, welcome. Thanks to each of you on the broadcast right now for taking some very valuable time. I often say the most powerful resource for any trader is their time, and it's certainly uh, humbling for each of you to take some time to spend with me. Uh, if you're a new trader, or maybe you've got some experience and just looking to brush up on some different aspects, your investment in yourself and in your skills as a trader, which is what ultimately, uh, in my opinion, is the most valuable thing that you can do to continue to improve and refine your own trading. So congrats to you for being here and making that investment. I also want to thank you in advance. Feel free to fill up the chat box with questions, comments, um, things you'd, you'd like me to speak to. I'm certainly happy to do that. Uh, and uh, really anything. Today we're talking chart patterns. If you have some general questions about Nadex or, or chart patterns, uh, your setup, happy to help uh, in any way, shape, or form. So uh, fill up the chat box and uh, let me know what you're thinking. So today we're talking chart patterns. These are six chart patterns every trader should know. This is part one. Soon after, we're going to have a part two where we'll go live and look at some live markets in action. We'll draw some patterns. Uh, so um, definitely uh, check your Nadex webinar calendar. Um, some fantastic webinars out there really throughout the month. I also encourage you to check the Nadex YouTube channel uh, if you would like to refer back to this webinar or see what other resources are out there. Uh, Nadex has a fantastic uh, array of, of videos on the Nadex YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, search for Nadex, find the channel, favorite the channel so that you can easily find it and check out some of the other webinars. But uh, we'll be back on the 24th, so next week, to do part two. And so what we're going to do today is really go over the concept and some basic chart patterns, Then we'll take it a step further next week. We'll show you some of these patterns in action, talk about um, different ways that uh, I would use those patterns in the context of live markets. So uh, two-part series. Again, if you can't make the second one, definitely check it out on the YouTube channel and check out uh, all of the other fantastic Nadex resources. In addition, I want to point out if you are listening to this or checking out another webinar or video resource from Nadex on YouTube, use the comment feature on YouTube. Leave some comments, some questions. We've got the chat box, the question box, obviously. I can answer those live, but for this broadcast and other Nadex broadcasts, put a question in that chat box. Nadex is great uh, at supporting their traders and their community, and they'll route that question to the presenter and um, get, you some, get you some answers and some assistance. So uh, fantastic. My name's Jason. I am from thedutchbook.com. Feel free to drop me a line after this is over, jason at thedutchbook.com. Uh, would love to hear from you. Would love to hear about other webinar ideas or things you're looking for as a trader. Uh, whether you're new to Nadex or you've been with Nadex for a little while, would love to hear from you. Real quick, our risk disclaimer. Uh, definitely want to make sure that uh, everyone understands that Nadex and trading on Nadex does involve financial risk may not be appropriate for every investor. My purpose here today is purely educational in no way, shape, or form. Will there be uh, any solicitation of uh, selling or buying any type of financial instrument? Uh, the other piece I definitely want to make sure I make clear, any past results or past patterns or past market events or past trends we talk about cannot be construed as being indicative of future results. I'll leave this up for another second and then we'll get started. All right, so real quick about me. My name is Jason, uh, proud to serve the Nadex community with some educational resources. Um, what we do at thedutchbook.com is provide insight, analysis, education, forecast for traders. We put out a newsletter once a week with weekly with updates throughout the week. Uh, check out some more information about us at thedutchbook.com. 
But uh, to know me is to know I'm an educator at heart. I'm from Oklahoma, a simple guy. So I'll put this content today in as plain English as I can. If you have some questions again, or if you want me to go more in depth on something, please let me know. Uh, I too understand and know what it's like. Uh, I'm constantly learning myself. So I want to make sure I'm available uh, and able to uh, help you in any way, shape, or form. So as we talk about chart patterns, let's get started. Uh, there's a couple of assumptions that you need to make. And as we talk about chart patterns, one of the things I like to tell traders, whether it's technicals or chart patterns or different systems, not everything is going to be comfortable for everyone. Not everything is going to make sense to everyone at the same level. Our brains work in different ways. Our, our, our strategies, our level of risk, our experience levels might all be different. And that's one of the reasons I love trading. It's also one of the reasons I love trading on Nadex is because there's, you know, on Nadex, for instance, there's so many markets, so many different ways to trade. You've got spreads and binaries and different time horizons from five minutes to a week to, you know, a month. So if you're more of a short-term trader, there's contracts that fit that. If there's, you know, you're more of a long-term trader, you know, for a week or a month, but you still wanted the flexibility to get out at any time, you have those options at Nadex. So just like you've got many opportunities to trade, you've got many different ways to approach those trades. One reason I like talking about chart patterns and technicals, and I encourage everybody to be familiar, is whether or not you use these specifically for trades, I still encourage you to do as much research on markets as you can and listen to other folks and other analysts and other educators. And there's just a level of fluency with different concepts as you move from a beginner to an intermediate to experienced trader that you'll want to have. And whether or not, for instance, you trade on a head and shoulders pattern, I do think that you at least need some level of fluency to know what a head and shoulders pattern is, what it potentially symbolizes, and what somebody may expect or may not expect to happen next as a result of a head and shoulders pattern. So that if you're watching Bloomberg, for instance, and somebody's talking about oil, this is just a hypothetical example, and they say, hey, oil's headed into a head and shoulders, you'll understand what that means. You'll have the vernacular and the vocabulary of the craft that you are getting better and better at and practicing. The other opportunity you have, at least with Nadex, is if you go to nadex.com slash demo, if you haven't already, you can uh, register for a free and permanent demo, demo account. I really encourage you to do this if you haven't already. It's free, it takes two minutes, uh, and uh, it'll be stocked with you know, um, theoretical money so that you can make live trades and live markets with the comfort of knowing that it's a demo account. It's also you know, free and permanent. It's not gonna go away after a week to, or something like that. So that as you learn these different concepts, you really have an opportunity to see if, hey, you know, I, I attended the webinar based on chart patterns. Maybe I picked up a book or read some blogs online. I'd like to try my hand at it with some live trades. Uh, you've got the demo account at nadex.com backslash demo to do just that. So as we enter into talking about chart patterns, a couple of the assumptions, whether or not you trade based on chart patterns, if, if, if you do believe there's some veracity to the concept, the assumptions that you will be making is that you believe that the market does move in certain patterns. And that another assumption you would be making is that those patterns might repeat. So to me, conceptually, a market is at its core, you know, a model of, of human behavior, right? It's, it's a group of people coming together and trading with one another, trying to find equilibrium on the price of different assets in different markets, right? But it, ultimately, it's a collection of people trading assets. I personally do believe over time that markets do exhibit different patterns of behavior and that over time, those patterns repeat. Sometimes I look at that through the prism of a chart pattern. Sometimes I'm using technical indicators like RSI or a MACD. Also at the dutchbook.com, we're very quantitative. So I'll pull down you know, oil data and look at seasonal trends and those things that you would do quantitatively. So I do believe that on some level, uh, markets do move in patterns and those patterns repeat with, with 
a chart pattern implementation, again, you're saying that you know, you'd be able to chart that with maybe a bar chart or a candlestick chart, and you'd be able to see in a linear fashion those patterns flow through your chart, which would ultimately be representing the market. Uh, as I said, real quick, again, you know, as you start to, you know, you're in your nadex.com demo account, you're trying out chart patterns, these, there's as much art to science about it. Um, there's definitely folks who are very scientific about it and very sp specific and traditional about it. Um, there's other folks who might be a little looser and it may look a little more subjective and, you know, their their neckline isn't a perfect, you know, parallel. Uh, so, again, just know you've got some space in there to make your own interpretation. That's where I encourage you to understand the content, understand the concepts, practice on your demo account, learn more, get some information from other sources, and then put it in practice and give yourself some time. You know, the two concepts here I want to leave you with from this visual are discipline and experimentation. You have to be disciplined in practicing and trying things over and over again, but you also have to give yourself some room to do just that and to experiment with different types of patterns, experiment with different types of markets, and um, ultimately, hopefully, have fun because this should be fun. It's not fun every day. It's not fun to be on the wrong side of a trade, but have some fun learning something new and trying your hand with some different approaches to trading. So a couple of things real quick before we dive into our six patterns. And yes, there's definitely more than six. Uh, we might touch on a few. If we see a few next week in our part two, remember, register for part two, get that on your calendar. That's going to be a lot of fun. We did this last month with technical indicators. You know, we review the content. I'll give you a few days then to go and maybe register for your demo account. And if you haven't already or go into your demo account, if you have it in practice, and then next week we'll come back. You could follow along live, look at the same markets I'm looking at, and we'll draw some chart patterns and look at it. So as we talk about chart patterns, you know, I'm a big believer in your mental approach as a trader is is 95% of this game. This is a mental game. And and your your greatest competition as a trader really is yourself. And, and the process you go through mentally goes a great uh, way in determining your ultimate level of success. A couple of things. One, remember it's about a lot more than direction. One of the classic case uh, mistakes some newer traders make is you know, they think it's it's all about direction and they get excited because maybe they see, you know, a head and shoulders teed up. You know, you've just been on a webinar, you've read a book, you see a head and shoulders, here it comes and boom, you place, you know, a trade right then and there. And you really haven't gone through your process to think through your level of risk. And does this trade fit in my trading plan? Have I sized this appropriately? Where's my exit? So as you learn this new content with, you know, chart patterns where we do talk a lot about direction and we try and divine direction based on the chart pattern. Keep in mind, it's this is about a lot more than direction. Your ability to manage your risk, your ability to properly size trades, stay loyal to your trading plan, and um, come up with entries and exits that feel right for you that align with that is, is really critical. The other piece is know why it a trade or a pattern might be working, right? Understand what a head and shoulders ultimately means, right? Like the market is losing momentum, it's heading down. And, you know, I encourage if you're putting real money or preparing to put real money on that trade, um, it's one thing to say, hey, this is an ascending wedge. Here's what's going to happen next. But if you don't know, let's say you're trading copper, why copper might be under pressure or what an ascending wedge even symbolizes. You just know that you saw it before and so you're going to place a trade. Um, I don't know that that's a sustainable strategy. So what I tell folks is if you can't explain why you expect your trade to work in one sentence or less and then explain also why it may not work in one sentence or less, you probably need to do some more homework. And that stays stays the same for uh, trading with chart patterns. So I want to stay balanced. If if there's a good balance here between art and science, as we said earlier, stay subjective and objective. You don't want a chart pattern to dictate your whole strategy. If you don't feel comfortable with the trade, but you see 
a double bottom, but you're still not comfortable just subjectively. You think, hey, I'm trading oil. Looks like it's coming off a double bottom, but I'm concerned about oil inventory numbers tomorrow, and I don't know that I want to be exposed. You still want to, in my opinion, roll that fundamental insight into your trading plan. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't feel right, then then keep looking for a trade that feels right for you. Uh, if that's in, again, your your risk tolerance and, and your own personal trading plan. Keep it simple. Um, as we talked about this earlier, you should be able to explain why it may work and why it may not work in one to two sentences total. Practice, we've talked about the demo account. Really encourage you to register for that if you haven't already. And then lastly, and I just said, you know, this should be fun. You know, you're, you're learning a powerful skill. You're learning something that you'll continue to learn about for the rest of your life. So have fun, stay positive. Patterns do not work. Um, sometimes there, there's always uh, surprises. Uh, just learn from each trade, whether you're on the right or winning or losing side, and, and apply that to your next trade, and you'll continue to get better and better over time. So real quick, the six patterns we're going to go over. Again, these are just six of, of many. Um, <clears throat> double tops, double bottoms. Uh, those are powerful reversal patterns. Triangles, head and shoulders, rising wedge, falling wedge. Uh, so those are six. Um, again, we'll try and take a look at all of these next week as well. And if we see some that we don't cover today next week in a live market, I'll explain those as well. So our first pattern, real quick, to give you an overview, is a double top reversal move. This is a reversal pattern. Typically, patterns fall into a couple of buckets. You have what's known as continuation patterns, where you have a market moving strongly in a direction. You see a certain chart pattern, and then it continues in that same direction. So if it's heading down, you see a continuation pattern, it keeps heading down, would be the expectation. A double top or a double bottom is what's known as a reversal. It's so when you see this pattern set up and execute, you would expect it to move in a reversal from the trend that had had been on. A double top really basically, and we'll take a look at a more detailed breakdown here. Um, you have a prior trend in the case of a double top, it's upward. Um, you have a peak, a trough, a second peak, and then ultimately the reversal and break of prior support. So let's take a look here. So we are trading Aussie dollar, US dollar, Great Forex market that I love to trade. Um, this one's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're into Forex and you're into the Aussie, you know what I mean. If you're not, maybe be one to take a look at. Uh, at least read more about it. A lot going on there with all the trade talk. Australia dollar is um, at a fundamental level highly linked to commodities in China and has uh, certainly felt that through a variety of news cycles lately. So let's take a look at Aussie dollar, US dollars. This is a classic double top. Um, this is over a longer period of time. I wanted a nice large pattern just to kind of show you the concepts here. First part is the rising trend on the left side. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Even though you've got some what I call EKG lines up and down, that is a rising market marked by higher highs, lower lows, primarily in this case, lower lows. You have the strong move up into uh, the first peak. Then it breaks off and breaks down into the trough. We're kind of in the middle to the middle right now of the screen. Hits the V-shaped bottom in the trough, rises back to the second peak, and starts to decline again. So in real time, and again, we'll look at some real time examples next week, um, this double top, I would start to look at this as a double top as we start to come back up that second peak, right? I would not trade off of it as a double top quite yet, but I would see it as a potential or possibility for forming a double top reversal pattern. Then once I saw that decline and it started to drop precipitously, I would really start to get excited. Hey, we may really have a double top here from a classical sense charting sense once you break that prior support which in this case is the v-shaped bottom of the trough you have the confirmation uh from a, again a chartist standpoint that would for if you're 
really adhering to classical chart concepts. Once you break that prior support, you are now confirmed in a double top reversal downtrend once you break that previous support. So prior trend, first peak trough, second peak decline. Once you break that support, you can confirm that you'll probably, at least again, in, in classical double top theory, um, you're in a down downward trending market. Certainly you see that here in this case. Little bonus here, um, this isn't a candlestick webinar, but um, you also have some, and I didn't zoom in on these, we can zoom in on the 24th on our part two webinar, you know, some strong reversal wicks here on your candles as well. That also in real time, uh, I would not trade based on that necessarily, but that would be another indication to me. You see the longer wicks on those reversals. Um, and for coming, and you know, by the time we get to that second peak, you know, again, nice long reversal type candlestick hits the double top, and then we start heading down. That would that would be another indicator for me from a, a candlestick perspective that we have a reversal in play. Okay, double bottom reversal, um, similar conceptually, but uh, the reverse. So we have a prior downward trend now, formation of the first bottom, intermediate peak, reversal back to support. In this case, it's support, and then a uh, pivot higher, which is confirmed by the, uh, and I have the break, it says break of support there. Um, you know, it's really resistance there um, on the high side. So trading dollar yen, man, another FX pair of mine, um, favorite of mine, love trading the yen. Um, so we have a declining trend. Double bottom, again, in this case, you know, we have some good long wicks, again, at the reversal. Um, we rise back up. In this case, it's instead of the V-shaped, where it's on a double bottom, in this case, it's, you know, like a triangle or a pyramid shape with a point. Heads back down, bounces off the bottom, and starts to move back up. Then when we break that resistance, in this case, at the 109.20 level, um, once we break that resistance, we're confirmed that um, we've we've had a reversal out of a double bottom. And one of the questions I get, and this is why I encourage everybody on certainly one of, every one of my webinars or any time I'm interacting with, with traders and sharing content, um, folks ask me about the level of precision that you know a wick needs or a candle needs. And and I, you know here's my disclaimer: um, everybody's got their opinion. There's certainly folks who are extremely strict about, you know, the bottoms being perfect, the wicks being perfect and touching. You know, you can see in this case, we've got the wicks going a little past the bottom. Some folks don't chart to wicks. Some folks just chart to the bars. A lot of folks chart to the wicks. Um, this is where I say a little more art than science. Um, I'm certainly somebody who likes to adhere to the spirit of the concept, but... Um, you know, from time to time with with as, as large and fluid as markets have gotten globally, you know, a little bleed on a wick one way or the other is is not going to talk me in or out of a potential, potential trading opportunity. I also say this, you know, it, it, sometimes it deals with the volatility of the market. Um, you know, sometimes you can get a high degree of volatility in a crypto market. Again, I would never encourage you to do you know, anything that doesn't feel natural to you, but I certainly, as a trader, what I do is I, I do have different approaches based on the volatility or the conditions of the market. So, you know, a little less precision on, you know, if you're, tra if you're swing trading different price levels um, and you're looking for a target, you know, based on a prior swing level, you know, based on the volatility of the market, you've got some some room there to interpret um, how you want to play that. Um, so in this case, you know, the, to me, the double bottom form there, 108.40, as we break up above that level of resistance there at the 109.20, that would have been the confirmation that um, uh, we're in an upward trending market. And... Um, 
we have broken to the upside. All right, Head and Shoulders, one of the all-time classic favorites. So a Head and Shoulders is an extended move, and based on the time frame you're trading, um, you know, it, it can take a little more time to develop than some of the other patterns we've been talking about. Um, I will say also on the flip side though, you know, as you're trading different markets, and again, as I said earlier, one of the things that I love about Nadex, all the different markets that you can trade, um, you know, you may catch a head and shoulders, you know, and you've already got the left shoulder, the head, and half the right shoulder built when you switch to an hourly chart. Um, and, uh, you know, so it, well, it, it may have taken longer to set up. You're not necessarily sitting there staring at your monitor waiting, you know, for, for one, um, one pattern to form. Incidentally, and I should talk about time frames here, and this is a good time. Um, it's a great question. And it's, it's, it's one of those classic questions that again, you'll probably hear, you know, people have a different spin on it. You know, what time frame should I be charting? Or what time frame should I should I look for a head and shoulders on? You know, um, it should tangentially, generally match the the time frame you're trading on. Um, so let's talk about the first two patterns. So you know, a double top. You have a situation where the market has now hit resistance top resistance is above us twice at the same level had been rejected twice. So it's telling you the market has tested a level and rejected higher price on two separate occasions. If if you're trading a shorter term Nadex market, you know, an, a two hour binary, let's say, it gets much shorter on Nadex, but you know, you're just, you're picking an intraday time frame. I would definitely want to chart that intraday um, I think if you're going to err, it should be a little longer than maybe you're trading. But I, you know, I certainly would never chart based on shorter time frames that I'm planning on holding the trade. Um, you can get a lot of noise that way on a tick chart. Um, you know, if you're trading a, t if you plan to hold a trade for a day or a week, you know, you should be. I would use a daily. Um, you know, for that, I, I wouldn't choose something dramatically less than the time frame I'm trading on, right? Um, so. With respect to um, time frames, again, like everything, try out some different strategies on your demo account. But um, if you're if you're a short-term trader, you need to use a short-term time horizon. Um, if you're a longer-term trader, I wouldn't go past a day. I mean, I do use weekly and monthly charts to get really long trends for long-term trades, but. Um, you know that's 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 not necessarily something that applies here. So I'd use a daily at the longest if I'm planning on holding for a day or week. But um, I would I would pick shorter time horizons for shorter term trades. So head and shoulders, um, it's it's uh, more of an intermediate to advanced pattern than the double top, double bottom. Double top, double bottom. You should be able to pick out pretty quick, um, pretty pretty straightforward. This is a, a kind of a loose arcing pattern that has, you know, a rounding pattern on the left. You hit the neckline, which is also support, moves up to a head, which is higher than the previous, what is now the left shoulder, moves back down to support, and then it moves up to about the same level as the previous left shoulder, and then starts to break that back down. You know, this is a good indication of a market it's trying to find momentum. Again, one consistent theme through a lot of chart patterns is it's testing the same level multiple times. Um, and in the case of head and shoulders, after it comes, you know, it hits that same level that it previously had in the left shoulder, essentially, and I'm oversimplifying this, I think, but, you know, by the time you get to the right shoulder, the market's saying, hey, we're not going to make it back up to where we just were, that previous peak. We're really only making it to this more intermediate level, and as soon as price starts to reject that level, the market is, has basically rejected in the previous pattern two separate levels of higher price, rejected both, and 
starts to break down. Once it breaks what's known as the neckline, which as you can see on the, the picture there is that consistent level straight across, um, it's confirmed as a head and shoulders pattern. So as a trader, um, you'll start to see this tee up as a potential head and shoulders. Um, I would say potentially as it starts to break down the backside of the head, certainly if it hits the neckline and starts to work its way back up, you want to be on watch. This is a potential head and shoulders pattern. As it rounds over the right shoulder and starts to head down, you're definitely right there. Um, high, high possibility of being a head and shoulders. But once it breaks the neckline, it is a confirmed head and shoulders, a confirmed downtrend. Uh, in this case, continuation. We talked earlier about, um, you know, sometimes reversals, double top, double bottom, reversal. In this case, we have a continuation. We have a downtrend. Then we have this intermediate period where we work through the pattern, where the market's kind of trying to figure out if it wants to work its way higher. We go through a series of three moves to try and determine if we're going to work our way higher. Once we start breaking down that back side of the right shoulder, it becomes clear, um, at least in this historical example, not working higher, and uh, we start to break down. And you can see it continues the previous downtrend that it was on. The market just had this intermediate period where we're trying to see if we wanted to work our way to higher price. Falling wedge can be uh, thought of as a bullish reversal. So um, this is a pattern where on some level you've got a move lower, then the market moves higher, and then you have this sideways to downward tilting pattern. You can see in the picture there um, where the market starts to contract. There's two lines of resistance or a line of resistance and a line of support, um, and you start to get both lower highs and lower lows. So the market really starts to contract in. You can see that as it moves left to right between the two yellow lines. Um, this, this tells you that the market is coiling. Um, folks often think of these patterns as feeding a potential uh, for a breakout. And you can see in this case, this is pound yen, another uh, fantastic FX pair. Pound yen is known, known for, historically at least, known for higher levels of volatility and larger swings and moves than um, some other FX pairs at times. So in this case, you can see, you know, really the, the, the mark of this pattern is this contracting. In this case, we're using candlesticks. You see the sticks get shorter and shorter. We're still downward tilting. We're still um, between those two lines and that kind of contracting wedge pattern. And then we get a breakout to the upside. One of the things that can be, and we'll talk about triangles here too, um, more challenging for folks as they get into chart patterns or if they're a newer trader is timing. And you know, I'll often get a question, well, how do I know when the breakout is supposed to happen? Um, now, you may talk to folks, you know, with different systems and, you know, different measurements, et cetera. But, um, you know, at least from my perspective, you're waiting to see the breakout. If it's a breakout from a falling wedge, then you can expect that breakout to persist. One of the reasons I like to do the live piece second um, is to kind of show you some of these in real time is because it, it can be deceiving when we're looking at the, the static image here, the picture, because this isn't how it tees up in real time. As, as we come left to right, we look at that last green bar and you see the longer green bar that starts to break us out of the wedge pattern there on the on the right. And that's the bar that extends above the line of resistance. In real time as a trader, you don't have the benefit of knowing that that's going to be a longer green bar. You just see a bar start to tee up and start to form. Once you see it start to elongate, then as a trader, I would know, okay, I see the falling wedge behind us. I see a bar that is going longer and longer and starting to extend above the falling wedge pattern. Then I would know, okay, this may be a breakout. But I would certainly encourage, especially for our newer traders, you know, I wouldn't force it. I wouldn't try and guess. I wouldn't try and, you know, pick a spot that I think here's where the breakout's going to happen. Certainly as the candles get narrower and the market coils and coils and coils, you get closer and closer because at some point that's got to break. 
but I wouldn't try and time it as much as once I start to see the breakout happen, um, that on the back of a, 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 a bullish falling wedge, I could think, okay, this this could have some legs to it. Again, that's you know historically the way folks think of falling wedges. Um, it doesn't always end up that way. We know that, but you you would think it could have some sustainability. This this trend could have some pop potentially based on the fact that it's coming. It's a longer bar coming out of a falling wedge. Rising wedge, very similar, um, but it's you know a a, a a, a bear, more bearish pattern where you have the rising wedge and then um, you get the breakout to the downside. So it's just the opposite. It can also be a continuation or a reversal. Um, in this case, it's a continuation. Um, but the, the key here is, again, the rising wedge where you get some contraction that mildly trends up and then you get a breakout to the downside. And the key here is, again, in the last example, we had a really nice long candle. It doesn't always work out that way. It would be nice if it did. In this case, um, we, we simply just break that upward sloping trend line of support to the downside. And then you can see um, we have a moment there after we break that trend line where the market goes a little sideways. But again, it just continues to break down out of that mildly rising wedge pattern so wedges are really a simple pattern I think folks sometimes are surprised like that's you know that's all there is to it well, yes um, and and the key is here again think about the um, behavior that it's it's symbolizing there you have a market in this case it's trended down it's it's trended down a lot in this case we're, we're trading Conoco Phillips here um, if you got a 401k, this one's probably in it. So um, a stock we're all familiar with. Uh, ConocoPhillips, this is a few years ago, actually. Anyway, so it's it's headed down. It's headed downhill. It, that thing's falling off the tabletop. The market hits what some folks may think of as a bottom and starts to work its way back up. But work through kind of your own mental model here. There's no, there, there's little to no conviction. You have a You have a weak or a shallow move up. The candles are getting tighter and tighter and tighter. You know, the, the if this market was gonna was gonna pop back up, one might think, um, you know, this would be more of a move of conviction considering how far it's fallen. Um, it's it's a shallower trend up, and the market as the candles tighten, you, you know, there's some bulls on the the other side of those trades trying to hoping it works its way back up, but it's just a very weak trend, a weak move. Once their support of the market breaks. In this case, bears take back over and it just heads down at the same trend. So this is like that intermediate kind of checkpoint. We've headed down, trying to work our way back up to correct off of some of those losses. There's just not enough strength. It's a shallow move to correct. And once that support breaks, um, you're going to have to, the market will have to correct downward again until it finds a new support level so as you learn these chart patterns again very simple uh, you're just looking for a contracting trend that's either slightly up or slightly down a rising wedge falling wedge think about what they represent think about what's going on in the market and uh, you know start practicing so triangles next pattern uh, these are continuation patterns they can be bullish or bearish um, depending on whether the angled resistance line is on the top or the bottom. So um, we'll just talk about both of them right now. Um, in this example, the triangle is descending, so the pattern is bearish. So in this case, rather than rising or lowering, you really have a flat support line that the price is narrowing to. But that, that line really gets pretty parallel. Um, and once... Again, price continues to contract into that support line. You, you've got really two phenomenons. One, the market is, is in this case, in a bearish triangle, staying lower. The more comfort a market shows lower, you know, it has a greater potential for possibly continuing to move lower. Um, and then once it starts to move lower, you've broken support. Once you break support and you continue lower, it can be a pretty steep 
move down. So this is a, a triangle continuation pattern. You got a flat bottom there. You've got lower highs, flat lows before the triangle gets to the apex. There's times, and we talked earlier about, you know, especially with wedges, timing can be hard. I would not encourage a new trader to try and time moves out of wedges. You want to see support break as confirmation. Um, you know, triangles do start to get to an apex, right? And there's only, there's a certain point at which it really can't narrow too much more. Um, so as you can see, as this one narrows to the apex, markets just coil and coil and coil. And so whether or not you are trading and deciding trades and building a strategy around chart patterns, again, if you think about the behavior that this is exhibiting or, or representing of the market, you've got strong support but it's not it's not an, it's it's only enough to hold it's not really moving the market higher and at some point the thinking goes that support will exhaust and once it exhausts support will break right so this is a good example of the bearish triangle uh, and this is why i really think chart patterns apply to any trader because you know some you know, you'll have, you'll have folks who just don't believe head and shoulders or don't believe some of these patterns work. You have some folks who swear by it. They're both equally successful. I do encourage everybody to understand I can look at a triangle, descending triangle pattern, and as I see lower highs and flat support, that tells me something very clear about the market. You do have some support there, but it's not enough to move the market higher. When it's not enough to move the market higher any longer, and those folks in support say, hey, you know, basically it, this thing ain't moving up and breaking resistance like i expected you know they sell or their move gets exhausted that market's is at some point at risk of breaking back down below that level of support and once that support breaks it can be a pretty can be a pretty steep ride down so think about you know what this is representing as well whether or not you're actually um timing it or building a trade off of it, it does give you some insight as you're scanning different markets, um, all of the different markets, you know, Nadex offers or, uh, you know, on your trade station or charting of choice, you know, it, it's, it's telling you something about the behavior of that market and, and gives you some insight as to what's, what's going on. All right. I'm going to look at some questions here. So if you put some in there, I really appreciate it. Um, got a few to work through here. So, how likely are these different patterns to show up on lower chart times? For example, the five-minute binary market. Great question. They can absolutely show up across any time frame. Um, on a tick chart, you do have um, a little more volatility and noise. So, you know, you you may, you know, you may have to um, look through. Or, you know, be more patient for it to tee up and set up because you have, you know, the market may bounce around a little bit more. But relatively speaking, really, um, I, chart patterns apply to any time frame. So if you're trading five minute binaries on Nadex, you absolutely could apply what we just went over. The logic works. And if we just, just because it's the last one we talked about, we talked about the descending triangle. If in a very short time frame, you know, you see support, 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 but lower high, lower high, lower high, that's at risk of breaking down, just like it would be on a daily, weekly, or monthly. Um, but again, on a on a, on a a tick chart, I guess what I'm saying is it, it moves more quickly, right? You're putting bars up very quickly. And so you could have lots of patterns start to form. They don't quite complete. Uh, you could have more patterns because you just have more bars. And so it, it could be, qualitatively more fun more action this is my opinion uh solely my opinion you know it's a it's a fun way to trade and a fun way to chart but um you know the opposite of that is if you're trading a daily you know you got all day to draw your charts and it's not going to change until tomorrow and you know so it, it might be a little more straightforward i hope that answers your question but the, the short answer is equally effective it's just really your pace your your level of volatility tolerance your level of risk um, you might get some starts and stops on a five minute um, whereas you'll have you know all month to chart you know a, a, a head and shoulders in the oil market or something 
might be a bit of an exaggeration, but. All right, great question. All right. So for breakout moves, should we have a breakout, retest, then look for re-entry? I generally, again, without a specific example in front of me, and we can look at some of these examples next week. Um, I would say yes. I think one of the mistakes a lot of traders move is uh, or make is, you know, uh, not waiting for confirmation, not letting a retest happen. Um, you know, there's always, this is why it's such a mental game, right? This is why, again, it's fun and rewarding when you do well. Um, there's always a balance between striking and taking action and being patient. Um, but I think fighting, I don't want to say fighting your impulse to take action. You see a lot of folks who, who see a head and shoulders teeing up and then they trade and then maybe it drifts. You know, you want to see that neckline break for a true head and shoulders. You know, you want to see a rejection of higher price uh, that second time. You want to see on a double top. Um, so I would wait generally, again, without an example in front of me. I would definitely encourage you to, to, to see the full setup. Um, cause here's the thing, and here's the thing I, you know, I tell traders, if you're right, it's going to continue to, it should continue to move with some chop. It should continue to move in that direction. And all you've done is given yourself a little more time to allow yourself to be right. And folks will say, well, yeah, but I may have lost a few ticks. Well, and this is, again, I just want to be clear, purely my opinion here, but you know, if you wait a tick or two for it really to confirm, you know, it, uh, you know, it's it's a it's, to me a sustainable way to trade. Uh, if you, if you've got a level of confirmation that you're more comfortable with, you know, ultimately it gets down to your level of comfort though. That's why the Nadex uh, demo account and some other tools are great. All right.